It's earnings season, which means right about now is whenever we get a glimpse into seeing how automakers are faring with the second quarter of 2024 and how they're doing given the state of the current car market. Now, to set the tone, at least for the last few quarters, in many cases, automakers have been seeing growing revenue but declining profit. Now, this isn't true across all automakers, but it is true across many. And this has been the story for pretty much the last year and is the reality due to a few different reasons, including a decrease in demand, higher costs associated with producing cars, and a higher cost to buy a car for the consumer. This has in turn created a bit of a shaky car market, and the shakiness does vary a bit from automaker to automaker. And today, we're going to be talking about two brands that are basically at polar opposites whenever it comes to volatility. Tesla, arguably one of the most volatile brands in recent years, given price reductions, declining sales, and declining income. And General Motors, a brand that has no doubt faced its own hardships over the last year, but has all things considered been pretty steady. So let's get into it. GM reported their earnings yesterday, and things are looking good for the company. GM beat earnings per share estimates by 13.39%, and they also beat revenue expectations by 5.84%. Some of the highlights according to GM themselves is that in the Q2 of 2024, they had the best quarterly U.S. sales numbers that they've had since Q4 of 2020. They've had eight consecutive quarters of year-over-year -year retail sales growth, and GM saw a whopping 40% increase year-over-year -year in EV deliveries. On top of this, revenue grew by 7.2%, and net income grew by 14.3%. And while the average sales price for GM GM vehicles did go down slightly year over year, and while the amount of vehicles that GM sold in the United States went up year over year, in China and in some international markets, GM sales actually went down. And truthfully, this is a bit of a dark cloud that's looming over earnings season for the car market. Even in circumstances like GM where earnings were quite good, China has seen declining sales and hasn't met expectations many automakers have set. Because of the fact that the US car market has already grown by so much, many automakers are relying on international national growth in order to continue their company growth like they want to see. And if China, Asian, and international growth is beginning to slow down for these automakers, this is really a bad sign. And so even given the fact that GM had a really strong quarter with really strong numbers, and here in the US, things are looking pretty good, the fact that they did see these declining numbers in China, it's definitely not a good thing for overall outlook for the brand. Not to mention the fact that as we've discussed on this channel probably a hundred times, if not more, the car market is absolutely slowing down. And you're seeing this get Getting reflected and not only lowering prices in the used car market, increasing in dealership incentives, but you're also seeing this in auto manufacturers, in some cases lowering their prices as well, or increasing incentives at the automaker manufacturer level, which is something that we are seeing with GM. And this is true even given the fact that GM's year-over-year -year prices is lower, but not by that much. Now, one thing that I think was interesting and noteworthy is that of all of the cars that are under the GM umbrella, one of the few cars that General Motors decided to highlight specifically was the Chevy Trax. Now, if you watch my channel consistently, you may remember that a couple of weeks ago, I made a video talking about how Americans want affordable cars, and that one of the best examples of this is the Ford Maverick, and the other great example is the growth of the Chevy Trax. The Chevy Trax, which is not only one of General Motors' most affordable vehicles, but it's actually one of the more affordable vehicles in the entire car market, has seen explosive growth over the last year. And in this earnings report, GM took the time to call this out, stating that the Chevy Trax had seen five consecutive quarters of year-over-year -year sales growth of 100% or more. People want affordable cars, and I hope the fact that General Motors included this in their earnings deck, I hope it's a sign that General Motors is really acknowledging this, accepting this, and maybe embracing it. And by embracing, I mean maybe this means GM will introduce some more affordable vehicles. But who knows? And as far as GM's EV lineup, it is growing not only in regard to sales volume, but also in the available lineup. And all things considered, General Motors had a pretty strong quarter. But on the topic of growing EV lineup with GM, let's pivot to the next automaker that I want to talk about, which is Tesla. And the fact that General Motors is seeing increased sales growth in an increased EV lineup is one of the few reasons as to why Tesla had an underwhelming quarter at best. Tesla did beat revenue expectations by about 3%, but they fell short of earnings per share expectations by a whopping 16%. And while total revenue for Tesla as a company did grow by 2%, 
automotive revenue actually declined by 7%, and net income declined by a whopping 45%. When we talk about deliveries, things really don't look good. Year over year, the Y and the 3 saw a 16% decline in vehicle production, while their other models, which would consist of the 3, the X, and the Cybertruck, they saw a 24% increase. Now, my guess here, and whenever I say guess, I mean a very, very strong assumption, is that why we saw an increase in production for the X, the S, and the Cybertruck of 24% is because this time last year, the Cybertruck wasn't being produced and it wasn't being delivered. And so you have one additional vehicle within this three vehicle lineup, and that is in turn increased the vehicle production. And so I will really be interested in how Tesla is producing vehicles later this year, once we have taken the Cybertruck into account year over year, or even this time next year. I think that will give us much more accurate data when it comes to the production and delivery numbers of these three models specifically, because of the fact that Tesla doesn't break it down by make and model, and instead breaks it down by two different categories. Even with the Cybertruck potentially carrying the increased in vehicle production, you still saw a 14% decline in overall Tesla production year over year. Now, when it comes to deliveries, things do look better. The 3 and the Y saw a 5% decline in vehicle deliveries, while the S, X, and Cybertruck saw a 12% decline, and this overall equated to a 5% decline company-wide. Now, the fact that you're seeing vehicle deliveries declining at a slower rate than vehicle production is overall a good sign for Tesla, even though it does still show that demand is absolutely waning for the Tesla brand, it does show that they aren't producing significantly more vehicles than they sell and that they are cutting back production accordingly, which is a good thing for the brand as a whole. Now, similar to General Motors and other automakers, like I mentioned earlier, Tesla is also heavily relying on China and international markets in order to grow their brand and to continue seeing year over year and quarter over quarter sales growth. In fact, you can see here that China has seen just explosive growth in the BEV market over the last couple of years. And so like I mentioned earlier, if China is seeing a decline in this demand, this is absolutely not a good thing. And it's especially not going to be a good thing for the EV market because of the fact that EVs have been in such high demand in China over the last few years. So this is definitely not a good thing and it could potentially mean some rough waters in the future if this demand doesn't pick back up. Now, what does all of this tell us? Truthfully, not a ton that we didn't already know. We know that Tesla is being significantly impacted by other automakers creating EVs. Teslas are no longer the newest shiny thing. They're also no longer the only EV automaker that you can go with if you're looking at buying an EV. And today there are a ton of other options. And this is absolutely having a huge impact on Tesla's bottom line. All of this data also reconfirms the fact that the car market is slowing down. And while you aren't seeing this in the revenue and net income figures from GM, you are seeing this with the fact that GM is starting to lower prices. They are concerned about the future. And car demand is absolutely falling. So in summary, GM have reported strong earnings and they're weathering the storm of the car market extremely well. While on the flip side, Tesla, which I will agree is a totally different animal from General Motors, they are really struggling in this pivot and increased competition market of EVs that didn't really exist 5, 10 years ago. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.